out. All right, hey everybody, uh, thanks for showing up. Um, as Tom said, my name's Ken, uh, this is Kyle. Uh, we both come from architectural backgrounds um, and kind of find ourselves in the uh, interesting uh, world of the construction side. Um, so we've kind of hopped the fence working for the dark side. Uh, I work out of the Phoenix office, Kyle in the New York office, and uh, we both work for Gilbane Building Company. Um, go ahead and pop over. Sure. The uh, Gilbane Building Company, been around since 1873, was started in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, since then, has uh, grown into one of the largest construction contractors in the country. Uh, we are currently performing work worldwide. So, specifically our role as virtual design and construction engineers, um, we're kind of the, the middle band between the, the clients, the designers, the contractors, uh, and really developing that collaborative 3D world. Um, so the virtual design and construction is us, uh, and then BIM, Building Information Modeling, is kind of the tool we use uh, to, to do that. And really simply, all our job is, uh, is to make better buildings for our clients through the use of technology. All right, so this, uh, this video illustrates some of the types of work that we typically do and some of the tools that we typically use, you know, digital tools. Um, so if you're in the AEC industry, which some of you probably are, um, I'm assuming, uh, some of these tools might look very familiar. Um, as Ken had mentioned previously, our VDC group is essentially tasked with optimizing um, the, our building construction projects and use, you know, utilizing various digital tools. So, um, so we're constantly um, researching and experimenting with new tools that allow us to refine our um, planning and coordination strategies that we deploy in our projects. So our tool set mainly consists of building information modeling uh, platforms like Ken had mentioned, um, also coordination and estimation, estimation tools uh, along with scheduling tools and, and of course um, reality capture tools to do things like create laser scans and, and uh, generate point clouds that we can then use to um, coordinate model geometry around. And of course visualization tools as well, like uh, things like real-time rendering engines and game engines um, to, to do things like allow us to, to confirm design intent amongst our architects and owners. So the process of planning and constructing buildings primarily relies on graphical communication, as, as much to be said about the, uh, the entire AEC industry. Um, so we, are require, we require our tools to be fast and efficient, uh, but also possess the ability uh, to provide very rich detail in order to um, accurately explain very complicated concepts so we can utilize our tools to, to build buildings more effectively. So some of the current challenges that our tools, uh, that, we, that we see with our tools um, involve um, slow CPU-based processing times. Um, uh, for example, processing uh, laser scan data to generate point clouds to overlay on a BIM. That's kind of what you're seeing here. Um, so this takes a lot of time. And then, of course, maybe even generating mesh from this same point cloud data to bring into real-time rendering engines and things like that. Um, which is something we do frequently, but we have to, we have to wait a long time to do, to do that. Um, another bottleneck is, of course, the, um, the GPU processing capacity of our mobile devices um, to support highly complex 3D model, uh, to do models and, and associated data sets uh, while we're on the go, because we're constantly going on and off project sites. Um, so uh, in the future, is, is, uh, as uh, graphics processing gets smaller and faster, we'll be able to uh, collaborate more efficiently and, and solve more complicated issues uh, faster before they can affect the construction schedule, which is the goal of, of our tool set. So here we start to get into some of the uh, interesting um, augmented and virtual reality um, applica applications and experimentations that, we, that we've been uh, getting into uh, for, um, uh, to help us um, uh, reshape the way that we work a bit. Um, so learning, planning, and practicing safety are three uh, sort of general activities um, in our industry that we see um, augmented and virtual reality technology um, having the most impact in the way that we work. Um, that's because all of these activities um, are, ba are, are based solely on communication and team involvement. Um, and the current ways that we perform a lot of these activities um, uh, are, can be rather arduous or um, uh, inefficient, or they can just be difficult to learn and, and take decades to, to really master. Um, so. so kind of the, the first toe in the pool of the kind of VR uh, dive that we've started to do here at Gilbane um, is using some of the real lightweight kind of phone-based uh, VR uh, environments such as kind of the Gear VR, Google Cardboard, um, those types of items. Um, so by producing some kind of photorealistic uh, VR photospheres, 
Um, you can kind of see an example of up there on the right. Um, and being able to, to quickly and cheaply get that out to our clients and designers, because um, there are still some designers who don't uh, possess the sophistication or just access to the tools uh, to make this type of um, deliverable. Um, so being able to kind of step in, fill the gap, uh, and provide that experience to our, our clients uh, and prove to them what they're, they're buying in the end uh, has been a, a huge win for us and something that we're, we're doing on more and more jobs. So on the AR side for learning, uh, currently kind of our job as VDC engineers, we're dealing with uh, large models, large laser scans that can get over 100 gigs without batting an eye. Um, and all of that requires top of the line hardware uh, so it really ties us to a desk. There's really not a great way to get that into the hands of the people who are building these buildings. Um, we do strive to make sure all of that communication and collaboration is occurring, uh, but the dream is to get the actual data in their hands. Um, so kind of currently the middle ground for us is tablets. Uh, they're getting better and better, smaller, faster, you know. Um, we're beginning to be able to load kind of some of the lightened models onto them. Uh, and also get the plan set drawings and start to create these collaborative environments that can be taken to the field. And the kind of end goal of that is to kind of start utilizing the AR environment, which we're starting to dev on the, the Microsoft HoloLens, um, and ideally kind of invent and fulfill this paperless job site dream we have where everyone's seeing and using the same data in real time. There's no miscommunication and it kind of removes um, most, if not all, of the human error that occurs. So this is our first sort of quick case study. Um, so sometimes before a building is constructed, um, the owner might request to build some full-scale uh, physical mock-ups, like a physical prototype of a detail of a building, kind of like how you're, what you see in the, the left uh, image there. Um, so they might want to see things, uh, this, we might have to do this because they want to see things in real life like uh, materials or material transitions or um, the specific details and things, things of that nature. Um, so um, the old way and sort of still the current way of doing this is by uh, coordinating teams of trade contractors together um, who will ultimately build the building later in the field, uh, uh, according to those teams to, uh, to build the, the physical prototype, which can take weeks or months out of the construction schedule and potentially cost tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars depending on the detail. Um, so maybe not so cost effective or cost or time effective for the owner. Um, so the current way of doing this is by coordinating those same teams of trade contractors together to, to build a, a digital version of the, uh, of the prototype. And then we can render it and animate it, um, which is it's much more time and cost effective, of course, but uh, uh, it, the, the owner still doesn't get the understand the, the, the dimensionality and the scale that they would have if the, the mock-up was built in real life. Um, so the, the new way incorporates um, augmented and virtual reality, and we're kind of experimenting with both, um, to bring back that tactile sort of bodily kinesthetic method of learning that our industry is already so accustomed to, um, learning by physically doing and interacting. Um, so the mock-ups of the, of the future uh, will be built in virtual or augmented reality environments like I mentioned where the owner and our project teams um, have the ability to walk around and touch and interact with these digital objects um, to get a sense of scale and dimensionality as it relates to the actual project concept, context. Can you guys hear that? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so this video has a few uh, digital mock-ups that our colleague, uh, John Myers, uh, out of the uh, Gilbane Boston office, um, it, uh, him and his team had put together uh, um, for, for their, uh, for their um, HoloLens. And this is them on the site actually using it. So in the near future, um, we're expecting all of our field staff uh, to adopt augmented reality into their day-to-day -day activities. Um, as a sort of real-time replacement for the traditional 2D paper shop drawings, which can get ripped and dirty and uh, uh, mis miscommunicated very, very uh, easily. Um, so the goal is to is everyone will have constant, um, up-to-date design information um, in real time, both on and off project sites, which is extremely important for us. Into the 2D 
here. Let me get it out of the way. There we go. Um, <laughs> okay, so looking a bit deeper into the future, maybe not too further, um, because we could totally use this right now, um, but uh, there's a huge potential for artificial intelligence and deep learning uh, to be incorporated into the augmented reality tools for construction that we will eventually be using frequently. Um, so if our AR tools were smart, um, they can act as a sort of second pair of eyes uh, and constantly scan the construction site from the perspective of every worker um, uh, while they're on site. And uh, it could uh, do things like constantly compare the uh, previously coordinated building information model that we spend uh, time uh, coordinating in the pre-planning process before construction starts. Um, it can compare that model to the current state of, uh, of you know, the, the building as it's being constructed and, um, and find inconsistencies between the two. Uh, and and uh, bring up real world, bring up real time coordination issues, which would be really powerful. Um, it, it can also do things, uh, perhaps like uh, like uh, create real time instructions for field workers again to replace the traditional paper shop drawings as they're installing uh, systems and things like that. Um, or it can even help identify various safety issues in real time, um, or even detect things that are difficult for people to see, like structural deflection or uh, cracks in concrete. And, uh, uh, SmartVid.io is doing something very similar to that right now, which is really interesting. Cool. So another kind of major area that we're starting to um, leverage VR and AR in uh, is kind of the site logistics planning uh, phase that we go through on every project kind of before we get boots on the ground, shovels in the dirt. Um, traditionally, this task is a bit erratic uh, going from kind of digital plans to hand sketched kind of overlay drawings. Um, things that don't have great defined scales. Um, so there are, being, there are assumptions being made at this stage um, that if not done correctly, will affect and impact the rest of that job's lifespan. Um, so by kind of bringing in the AR and VR world, we can much more accurately represent uh, what's being planned uh, and show it in a way that is much uh, more expedient in explaining uh, the idea and the process we're going to be going through. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so going back to the bodily kinesthetic method of learning from our previous augmented reality example, um, we've started to apply some of the same learning methodology uh, to common planning activities, like Ken had mentioned, uh, site logistics planning, um, utilizing virtual reality. And, and the, the immersive nature of VR allows us to create very photorealistic environments where our users can feel comfortable in a digital space and get actual work done, hopefully. Um, so uh, this example is a very sort of utilitarian application of, of VR, where our uh, project managers and VDC staff can, um, can coordinate and schedule actual construction activities um, to happen on a job site later, um, but while they're in this digital space. So they can spawn and draw objects around a scale version of the construction site, as they're kind of doing here. Uh, they can sketch things out and uh, have some common planning tools. Uh, it's a dirt mound, by the way. <laughs> um, so they have various, they also have like various other tools that they can interact with, uh, things that maybe can't exist in the real world. Um, this is an example of time dilation, where the users can um, uh, plan things out in a kinesthetic way and then uh, play it backwards in time while they still have full control. Um, so again, maintaining the uh, bodily kinesthetic learning methodology. Um, and then of course, all of the assets are interactive and they spawn and you can place as many as you like. And, um, they're smart, um, to where there's no need to have to exit out to a 2D GUI menu or anything. It all kind of just happens within the game, so it's just like a constant workflow. That's the goal, at least. Um, so, they, of course, they, like I mentioned before, they have like common planning tools where they can sketch things out and draw and take notes like they would in the real world if they're comfortable with that. Um, <coughs> trying to bridge that gap for, with comfortability. And uh, they, they can also visualize the project schedule in a Gantt chart format, which everyone is already used to in our industry, and, uh, and even pop open a web browser and look something up, uh, again, so they don't have to remove the glasses, they can kind of just continue working. Um, then users also have the ability to shrink themselves down, essentially, into a scale version, like a real world scale version of the construction site that they're building on the sandbox version, so it's kind of linking the two. Um, uh, and of course, the, all the assets in the full scale version are retain the same interactivity as the, as the sandbox version, so they can move things around and continue working and planning um, as they were um, you know, in, the, in the sandbox version, or they can mess around like I'm doing constantly. Um, 
So this is like really helpful um, for, uh, for scheduling more minute activities, like things like form work installation or uh, scaffolding and site work activities and things, things of that nature. So some of the current challenges with, with this uh, is we're, uh, we're not really game developers. Um, we built all the geometry and stuff ourselves, but we're sort of patchworking the, the interactivity and scripting together uh, using Unreal Blueprints, which is a visual programming interface if you're familiar with it. Um, so uh, Blueprints is maybe not so efficient as, as like raw code. Um, so we're kind of burning down our hardware to run this stuff. And, uh, being that almost every asset is movable and spawnable and interactive, and it, it requires massive dynamic lighting calculations. Um, so we effectively have to run it on supercomputers, uh, to, which, which poses a problem because we'd like to uh, bring this to job trailers and, and to, to different offices because that's kind of the way we work currently. Uh, so we're currently working with NVIDIA on this. We're uh, utilizing some of the Quadro uh, P5000 cards uh, and kind of swapping those out with the 1080 Ti's and Titans and stuff and just seeing what works best for our workflow. We noticed that the Quadros um, were able to spawn a lot more assets and create larger scenes. So it's, it's kind of like an interesting move in the, in the right direction, I think. So. And then the last kind of case study example of some work that we're, we're currently working on uh, is dealing with safety. Uh, at Gilbane, it's our number one priority. Um, as you can see up on the screen, we've got some kind of stats here, not glamorous stats. Um, OSHA statistics, nearly 4,400 people a year uh, lose their life on, on the job, and uh, almost a quarter of that is in the construction industry. So that's, that's nearly 1,000 lives a year that are being lost. Um, and, and they're not from complex accidents. They're simple things, falling, being struck by objects, electrocution, um, all things that can be solved. Um, so at Gilbane, we take a, a huge effort to uh, uh, make sure that we're ensuring safety and making it our prime objective. Um, in doing so, we have uh, one of the industry leading kind of safety records. Um, we're a four-time winner of the CISE Safety Award, uh, and we make it a, a huge concerted effort to not only <laughs> keep from someone from dying on our site, uh, but even someone from having an injury that makes them go home. Um, we want everyone to come to work and go home the same way. So this is fun. Um, safety on construction sites is, of course, highly regulated, like Kenneth mentioned. Uh, but even with all the safety measures in place, job sites can still be unpredictable and ultimately subject to the forces of nature, right? It's just the nature of our business. Um, so we created this uh, job site uh, training safety simulation game as part of a series that we're planning out. And, and this is my favorite part. Oh. This is like horrifying to develop because I had to do this over and over again. It gave me like crazy vertigo. So, uh, so the, the goal, the goal of this is to deploy these uh, simulations as part of a like a standard uh, Gilbane uh, safety training program uh, for our, all of our site crew members, um, alongside the, the, the standard OSHA training that we currently require uh, in order to enter in order to enter any of our project sites. Um, so our, our, that current safety training requirement to OSHA uh, is, is very much a lot of watching uh, uh, a lot of videos, hours of videos, which is an entirely different experience than, than having an immersive uh, real world, being immersed in a real world situation like this. Um, so these uh, simulations, these exercises, could help train workers and visitors uh, to the site by allowing them to experience real world <laughs> uh, situations and learn from their mistakes in a non-threatening way. And that's, that's the point of this. So we're definitely uh, planning to expand upon uh, different uh, fall safety uh, simulations like this one, but just different scenarios. Um, and then of course, uh, expand into things like tool safety um, and, and electrocution awareness and, and chemical spills and slip hazards and things of that nature that occur very frequently on a job site. Um, but it just, it just to get our, our, our crew members uh, just more attuned to the, to the things like that that, that they, they might miss otherwise. So mm -hmm. just getting them used to those situations. So that concludes our talk. Uh, just some real quick takeaways. Uh, we like to think of the construction industry as a sort of wild west of tech. Um, being that building buildings is extremely complicated and there's a lot of logistics and moving parts um, and uh, we can definitely utilize this, this sort of technology to, to help us and we, we have been, but you know, the, the, more, uh, the, the smarter it gets, the, 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 the more efficient we become. Uh, so we've been utilizing, the, I guess the question for you guys is we've been utilizing uh, GPU processing and, 
AR, VR tech to influence our industry and, and how could it help influence yours? So, so yeah, well, I guess at this point we'll just open it up for questions. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Fantastic. Any questions for Ken and Kyle? Yep. You mentioned uh, some of the point cloud processing. Obviously, there's a lot of data. Is there any GPU solutions for cloud registration and point scanning? And if so, what do you use? And what's your take on how far along that's at? Yeah, so I mean, c currently the software we're using is uh, CPU based processing. Um, so we're really not able to offload any of that into um, a GPU compute environment. So that's something that I know kind of being hand in hand with our kind of laser scanning partner, um, something that I keep asking them for. Um, but currently, yeah, it's, it's we're, we're stuck in the, the CPU realm now. Once we get into the kind of visualization aspect of it and navigating and rendering, that's when we start seeing performance increases. But yeah, 